What about the problems that the Indian conglomerates are facing today? Uh, we've heard from Cyrus Mistry uh, in his latest address to shareholders saying that tough decisions will need to be taken, for instance, when we talk about businesses that continue to perform and businesses that don't continue to perform. But on the conglomerate model, specifically in the Indian context, what are the key challenges that you foresee? And you were talking about the need for innovation and drastic innovation in Indian IT. What is the need to try and shake things up uh, within Indian conglomerates? You see, the conglomerates is a, you know, has a problem like this. Cause there are some small businesses and there are some large businesses. The large businesses, you know, which are in a cyclical nature, they are suffering today. You know, something like, you know, steel business is suffering. But I think now the steel prices have come up. So, frankly speaking, the huge debt which they are having, so sometimes I feel that some of the steel companies are working for lenders and not for shareholders. Mm. But it's difficult to raise capital today, you know, in these circumstances. And then there is the issue of dilution, etc. So, they have to pass this cycle. It's not that a good time can come, mm. but might take some more time. But if you really look at the problem of all these conglomerates, they have to think again, you know, that which are the businesses that are core to them and which are the businesses that are not core to them. Those mm -hmm. businesses which are not core to them, they can consider, you know, divesting. For example, Tata Capital, mm -hmm. Tata, Tata Chemicals have divested the fertilizer business, you know, today. And, you know, they have finalized the selling of that business. So, you know... They just want to then focus on their core competence. That's the way they have decided at the moment. And I think uh, there are a lot of other other groups, you know, which are, you know, facing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And those groups will have to think innovatively. Or they have to start selling their assets and repay the debt. Because these banks, you know, would want that money back. Mm. And, and rightfully so. And they, they need their money back. And I think the government also is backing the bank like anything. And they said, you shall recover your money. Hmm. So, you know, that is the whole issue. That Think about it. Can you make a EBITDA profit or you can't make a profit? Then you can't just continue to stick on that businesses. You've got to get out of those businesses. The government uh, in almost a decade now has finalized, or at least the cabinet has approved, the first strategic stake sale. And my conversation with Mr. Kant yesterday, he very clearly suggested that a lot more will follow and very, very quickly. So perhaps we will see more this financial year itself. What do you make of that? How confident do you feel about the government's plans to divest strategic assets, I mean, to go through with strategic sales? Uh, and, and also, in terms of the uh, sort of OFS offerings that the government is looking as far as public sector undertakings is concerned? See, I think the government, you know, divestment is the right thing to do. Because government cannot be in the business. The, the government should worry about, you know, how to, how to help the people of this country. Have notes, you know, must get something out of that. So, you know, it's no use sitting on those businesses. So, I think I'm, I'm glad that you are telling me that, you know, government is going to announce soon, you know, some of the selling of the businesses. Uh, the legend of Nimesh Kampani is that he is the keeper of secrets. Uh, and, and, and secrets across corporate India, your corporate India is a confidant. Uh, how did that come to be? A lot of people tell me to write a book. I said, if I write Will a book... You? Will you? I don't know the answer. If I write a book, I think a lot of people's secret will come out. <laughs> <laughs> will, they, will they be very unhappy, deeply disappointed, scared? What will the feeling be? No, I think, I think even if I write the book, I have to be balanced. You know? It would be balanced. But, but what was it, Mr. Kampani, why and why was it that people were okay to share secrets? And sometimes you had secrets of, you know, competitors as well, you were sort of uh, mediating between warring fractions as well. I mean, how, how did, what was that experience like for you? Listen more, speak less. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the mantra, is it? Uh, listen more. Always what? listen. Hmm. You know, people should become, people become impatient and not listen to client. You listen to client more, you will digest it and you will find solutions. Okay. Don't start giving your solution before client speaks, you know. Take, I take that point on board, but very quickly before you know, journalists to do that. You know. The, the journal, journalists are always <laughs> always impatient with asking questions. I I must admit, but let me ask you this, sir. Since we're talking about uh, uh, Deal Street and and uh, IPOs, and we just had a big listing yesterday as well. Uh, 
what do you make of the IPO pipeline? What do you make of the way that... Very good pipeline. And uh, what do you make of the way that they've been priced off late? Yesterday was a bad day, you know, with the war and other things, you know, geopolitical situations, so market went down. It's a good time to buy that stock. Okay. Because it has gone down, so investors should pick it up. Hmm. And you believe that we are going to continue to see a robust pipeline as far as IPOs are concerned? I think so. I think. Because our farm has also got a robust pipeline. <laughs> That's good to hear.